So when he died in 2005, what, you know, you were left with this company, with this organization, with the brand, with his legacy. Mm -hmm. um, what, tell me, you know, walk me through that time when, you know, Johnny Cochran passed away. What did you feel that you had to do to do justice to who he was and how he had lived? Uh, well, to, to start with, we're still doing that. I mean, sure. If you keep that in mind, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's something that has not uh, stopped. Uh, it was just we the recognized shock, the shock of that time, I guess. Well, it, the diagnosis was very unexpected. I mean, he was diagnosed with having a, a brain tumor uh, pretty much associated with the use of cell phone, analog uh, cell phone usage. That's what his neurosurgeon uh, said. And he had a tumor uh, behind his left ear. You know, at, in the diagnosis in 2004, and he lived uh, maybe 14 months after the diagnosis, uh, came as a shock, you know, because we, we'd had, uh, he was, um, we had him on a, a program of annual uh, examinations with the Mayo Clinic mm -hmm. extensively. Yeah. Um, and and uh, we uh, had significant insurance and they required even further um, medical examinations mm -hmm. extensively, which we were proud to have, you yeah. know, and this is for a, a period of years. Yeah. And he checked out uh, as perfect health, you know, the entire time. He was 64, almost 65 at the time he was uh, diagnosed. Yeah. And it was very, very surprising. Um, and what happened specifically is he was in New York. And, mm -hmm. you know, by this time we had, you know, private jet planes that seated 12. We had cars on the East Coast and West Coast and drivers that would drive him, you know, the East Coast driver was uh, Ernie, the Ernest was the West Coast driver. Mm -hmm. It just so happened they had similar <laughs> similar names. Yeah. They were not similar um, individuals. Sure. Uh, the New York driver was a former police officer about six foot flat five. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, LA driver was, you know, the, the opposite. He was uh, maybe five foot five yeah. and he was in his twenties. I mean, so that you can't yeah. really confuse these individuals. He had yeah. finished, um, Johnny had finished a mediation uh, the day before where he was and the lawyers that were in the room said he was spot on a hundred percent, you yeah. know, flawless in his delivery, his communication at being Johnny and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, accomplishing his legal task. Yeah. The next day he gets on the phone and he is talking to Ernest mm -hmm. in LA mm -hmm. thinking, he is in LA. He's actually in New York and he need, he should have been calling Ernie. Uh, Ernest, when he got off the phone, could tell that there was, uh, you something. know, something going, something wrong with mm -hmm. uh, the recollection of what Johnny was having and immediately uh, talked to uh, the office there. They, he went straight to the doctor that afternoon, wow. uh, which they diagnosed a um, brain tumor. Yeah. Wow. So uh, to, I guess to, back to your core question, your original question, we did have 14 months to uh, prepare and the, the best preparation we had came directly from Johnny himself. Mm. First thing he did uh, after the diagnosis was summon uh, all the partners uh, to LA. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and he said, and he's pretty much laid out what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And he used the term uh, even earlier, uh, it, he didn't use the legacy term. He used generational equity. Mm -hmm. He wanted a firm that reflected society and he wanted to us to build generational equity. Now I'd never heard the phrase or didn't have any, any concept, but in his definition uh, of that, he wanted something that transcended his life, obvi obviously, and that he wanted it to, when he says reflect society in, in terms of diversity and every other yeah. uh, manner, mm -hmm. uh, he wanted, um, if we were in a city, it's at 60% African-American population. He would expect that there'd be 60% uh, African-American attorney uh, population. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, so he had that kind of uh, groundwork and footprint. We had uh, probably at the time, maybe 14 offices. So we were, we were a robust firm with a lot of talent because Johnny handpicked the lawyers in the firm and a lot of the relationships came from the inner circle, mm -hmm. which were already recognized as some of the top uh, tort lawyers in the country. Mm -hmm. And that's who uh, he wanted us to uh, 
combine with or affiliate with, and, and we did. And we had some very, very strong lawyers in our firm that uh, knew how to implement and execute a secession plan. And uh, wow. we had the, the foresight and the documents, thanks to Johnny's East Coast and West Coast lawyers, wow. to put us in a good footing uh, in preparation. But one of the most um, uh, important and touching things was his willingness to get in front of the camera, even having been diagnosed with a brain tumor and knowing the prognosis. He's a very, very smart uh, person. So he knew what the prognosis was. Mm -hmm. And it was just a matter of weeks that he wanted to uh, get, uh, and we're still to this day using footage of the advertisements and the wow. marketing uh, that Johnny did. And we uh, really argued with him about the necessity of doing it, didn't want to put any stress and strain on him. And we even felt uncomfortable doing it, but he, he dove in. Um, and, and one, I remember one session was two days long. I mean, it was just beginning in the morning, going to the end of the day on, on two different days. Yeah. And to a point, I mean, Johnny had, uh, by then, but you know, because of the exploratory surgery that, that they did had one uh, side uh, of his hair wow. had been uh, shaved off and he had uh, um, an artist, a makeup artist come in, trim the, his hair, the backside of his hair, and literally glue his hair in such that it was uh, perfect. And that's the level of commitment that he had in making sure that his law firm family survived him. And so he, he, was, uh, he was our greatest uh, asset and ally. And it was a busy job because he was, I'd say for at least six uh, mm -hmm. or eight months of the 14 months, he was uh, still engaged uh, as he was, you know, starting to decline wow. medically. That's just an incredible story. Um, thank you for sharing that. I, I didn't know that.